Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about the MacBook Air mid-2012 Retina version. Let me let me tell you what I like about this first, uh, because there's some stuff I really don't like. In fact, they could uh, possibly be deal breakers for me. One thing I like is the build. The build is very good. I mean, it's a marvel of engineering as far as the way they built the machine. It's just astounding. Now, I personally do not like Mac OS, and I'm a Windows person, so I loaded it up with Windows 7 Professional. And to my surprise, it's work, it works really well. So, uh, for first thing first, I'm going to show you the Windows Performance Index. And uh, really, those are the highest that I've seen, even on my, even my desktop, which is only a, a year old, uh, does not even come close to this. So 7.6 for the processor, 7.7 for the memory, 7.2 for the uh, graphics, 7.2 for the gaming graphics, and the SSD drive, which this came with 256 gigabyte, scored a 7.9. Let's start with an overview of this uh, machine. First of all, it comes with this uh, charger. It comes with this type of charger and this... Uh, plug now the one thing I don't like about this plug is that it doesn't have the 90 degree like uh, the previous generations had or at least last year's and two years ago now why does it make a difference the old ones were really flush they were really flush so either the cable went flush like this or the cable went flush to the other side now, how does it make a difference? When you put it on your lap, it's very easy to just uh, disconnect this or have partially disconnected while uh, either your leg or the side of the sofa is touching it. The other version was uh, like a little tube and it was flush and uh, that one did not have that problem. Now let me do an overview of the actual hardware. So as you can see, it's really, really thin. This, it's thin, but you know what? It feels heavy. This is, uh, there's some vents here. Headphones, USB 3.0. Two, uh, Thunderbolt ports. The power port, vents on the bottom. Let's see if we can focus here. See the vents all the way in the back. Another uh, USB 3.0, uh, full size HDMI, very nice uh, and unexpected, by the way and an SD card slot. Now the thing about the SD card slot is that if you put the SD card in it sticks out and quite a lot actually. You won't be able to leave it there and kind of forget about it because it could accidentally break. Now there's vents also on this side right here and on the front you only have the uh, lip for the latch and this is the back very clean now one thing I noticed right off the bat is that the footings are slippery the footings are very slippery uh, you could easily knock it I'm not sure why they did not put footings that are rubbery but these are just this this is uh, this is just not good uh, I've seen that happen with other Macs and I wish they changed this. Uh, the footers should stick to where you put them. One more thing, I, uh, now you're probably wondering, you're getting this machine, you're probably wondering does it support the Mercury engine for Adobe Premiere? And I was able to get uh, the, the uh, Mercury engine running on both OS X and Windows and to show you I'll just go here to the uh, general settings and you can see that uh, you can
get the uh, Mercury playback engine GPU acceleration going. So that's great. Now, just by the way, right now we're not at full resolution. If I um, if I switch and I and I loaded a software that will enable me to easily switch resolution, I could switch to full resolution. And I got to tell you, it's unusable for any practical reasons. It, the, the text is just way too small. So I've been running on 9, 1920 by 1200. To my surprise, uh, the, uh, with this resolution, even though it's not native, everything is crisp and sharp. This screen is unbelievable. I really got to give them the credit here. This screen is by far, by far the best screen I've seen on a laptop and actually on a desktop too. This screen is absolutely amazing. And if I uh, pull the background, it whatever you see on the camera just doesn't do it justice. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous screen. But enough with the good stuff. Let's talk about some bad stuff. I've noticed that uh, these edges, these edges, at some point they're gonna dig on your palm or where, wherever you're resting it. They're very sharp and abrupt right there. I really wish there was a little taper here to not have a sharp edge. And the sharp edge is all around. Let me show you the AS SSD results on this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And by the way, it did pass the alignment. Uh, so it was aligned properly. So as you can see, very good write and read performance. This is really good numbers. All right, so we got the results in. And as you can see, they're very good. Now, uh, I wanted to mention a few things of people who intend to use this as a Windows machine. There's a few issues that you need to be aware of. For example, there is no Dell button. So, for to use the Dell button, you would have to use the function and delete on the keyboard. Let me show you the keyboard for a second. Also, there is no control button on the right side and uh, if you're used to doing the control K or control whatever uh, this would be an issue for you also there's no page up page down but function and the up and down arrow will do that another thing that I didn't like is the fact that they put the power button right on the keyboard uh, it's quite easy to accidentally press it instead of the delete button you know, especially when you're typing something, it's a mistake, and you quickly want to delete something, you could potentially hit that power button. And it's just like, it looks just the same as the other buttons. Now, all the uh, function buttons here work. For example, the uh, back, the, back, the uh, volume, up and down, the uh, lighted keyboard, as you can see it light it up so you can turn it up and you can turn it down the screen brightness can go up and can go down and this thing is wicked bright by the way <laughs> wicked 